Over the last few weeks, the stock market has continued to fall, with the S&P 500 down almost 20% this year. But the question is, what are you going to do about it? Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you the advice that I'm giving to my clients right now. And I can tell you that by the end of this video, you will have an entirely new perspective on this crash. Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is James. I am a financial planner and this is a place where you can learn to make smarter financial decisions. Before we get into this, I just want to say that this video is going to be a little bit of tough love and I hope it comes across in the right way. I know there's a lot of hurt and pain out there right now, but I think this is what you need to hear. So let's get into it. If you are a regular viewer of my channel, you will have often heard me say that stocks offer higher returns than bonds and other asset classes because they are more risky. But risk is a ambiguous word that is often misunderstood. So for this video, I'm going to substitute the word risk for pain because not only is it a good analogy for what I actually mean by risk, but it's also something that we're all feeling a lot of right now. And when you're feeling like this, it's always best to start off by zooming out. Here we're looking at the return of the S&P 500 over the last 100 years. And as you can see, it's got a very clear and consistent pattern, up and to the right, not just up, up a lot, over this time period, it's delivered an average return of 9.8% per year. Over the long term, the stock market is an extremely predictable wealth building machine. Just look at this. This is the same data, but showing you the chances of receiving a positive return over different time periods. Over 5, 10, 15 and 20 years, your chances of success are so high that they're almost guaranteed. But over the short term, it's a totally different story. Over the short term, as we are experiencing right now, the stock market can be brutal. It will beat you up, it will spit you out, and it will push you to the edge of your emotional limits. It can be incredibly painful. But if it wasn't difficult to endure, it wouldn't offer such great returns. Investors demand higher returns for enduring more pain. This is the founding principle of investing. This is what everything is based on. Why do bonds offer lower returns than stocks? Less pain. Why do savings accounts offer less returns than bonds? Less pain. If investing in stocks was a nice and easy ride, everyone would do it, which would dilute the returns on offer. That's it. Stocks and pain come hand in hand. You cannot have one without the other. Stock market crashes, they are not a bug. They are a feature of investing. So if you want higher returns than putting your money in a savings account, you are going to have to endure more pain. Now, I'm hoping this analogy is helping you to see why it's so important to understand your pain threshold. Because when the pain starts to get uncomfortable, as it might be right now, you'll start to make mistakes. Perhaps you'll try and de-risk your portfolio or you'll delay your next monthly investment. And if the pain becomes unbearable, you might even start to sell. But if you are a long-term investor, which you are, and you have a well-diversified portfolio, this pain is just in your head. It's not real. Because think about it. If you're invested in a global index fund, yes, it may be painful at times, but is there actually any risk of you losing money. You're invested in thousands of businesses from across the globe. So for you to actually see a permanent loss of capital, every single one of those businesses in the world would need to go bust. And for that to happen, it would mean that we've either been hit by a meteor or we've all become communists. And if either of those two things happen, then money's not gonna have much value anyway. The only way that you can ever lose money with these types of investments is if you underestimate your threshold for pain and you sell out at the wrong time, or you have not done your cash flow planning properly and you are forced to sell because you need the money. And both of these things are entirely within your control. Of course, as you get closer to retirement, cash flow planning gets a lot harder. But if you've done this properly, as I'll show you how to at the end of this video, you should be more or less insulated from any short-term market pain. In the short term, there is a very high chance of pain. In the long term, almost none. This is the contract that you are entering into as an investor. 
There is no other way around it. If there was some expertly skilled fund manager or some sort of system out there that could consistently produce high returns without any pain, then everyone would be doing it. And consequently, the returns of that strategy would be diluted to the level of a savings account or something that offers a similar level of pain. I lied. There, there is one strategy that does work. It's tried and tested, and it gives you access to the phenomenal returns of the stock market without any of the pain. But no one uses it. No one. And that strategy is don't look. Don't look. Seriously, if you don't look, there is no pain. It's genius, but no one ever does it. Well, actually, no, that's not true either. There are millions of people across the UK and across the world who have money invested in the stock market through pensions and old accounts that they've forgotten about, and they don't look, and they're not feeling anywhere near the level of pain that you are right now. So either don't look or get it into your head that stock market crashes are not only required to get good long-term returns, but they can also be good for you in the short term too. Let me explain. When you buy a stock, you are investing in a business and that stock gives you the right to share in the future profits of that company, also known as its earnings. And the stock price is the price that you pay to get access to those future profits. Now, clearly, the goal is to pay as low a price as possible for those profits. And the most commonly used metric to judge how much you're paying for profits is known as the price earnings ratio. Here we're looking at the price earnings ratio of the S&P 500. And you can see that since 2011, it has steadily been increasing from 13 all the way up to 38 in December of 20. 20. So according to this ratio, in December 2020, the S&P 500 was three times more expensive than it was in 2011. But since then, it has fallen dramatically. Initially, this was because companies' earnings were growing faster than stock prices. But more recently, it's because the stock market has fallen. So judging by this indicator, yes, the stock market has fallen, crashed, corrected, whatever you want to call it, but it's getting cheaper. It's still above the long-term average, but it's a lot better than it was 12 months ago. Now, PE ratios are not a predictor of future stock market returns, but they do give us some indication, which is the cheaper you can buy, the better. So although it is nice to see the stock market going up, if you are still in a position where you are accumulating assets and you're still investing each month, this is not actually what you want. All you should care about is that next month you can buy in as cheaply as you possibly can. Let me illustrate this for you. We know that businesses are pretty reliable at growing their profits over time. Over the last 100 years, the S&P 500 has grown their earnings at an average rate of 6% per year. So we know that companies are roughly growing their earnings at a average rate of 6% a year. And we know that stock market prices are anchored to those earnings. Sometimes you'll end up paying more for those earnings and sometimes you'll end up paying less. Now, if you're a long-term investor that's buying in each month, would you prefer to see this sequence of returns, which would end up giving you this average price, or this one. In this scenario, it may mean that all of the prior investments that you've made are showing losses for long periods of time, but they don't matter. You've already put them in, forget about them. They will be golden in years to come. You do not want the stock market to be high. You do not want it to be expensive. You want it to be low and you want it to stay low for as long as possible so that you can keep buying in at lower and lower prices. No one knows what the stock market is going to do next. So do not come away from this video thinking that you're gonna go and try and time the market and only get in when it's cheap because that will not work, trust me. All I'm trying to do is give you a different perspective on crashes so you're feeling more positive about the next monthly investment that you make. Now, if you're already retired, you might be thinking, James, but, but what about me? Well, if that's the case, you need to watch this video here where I talk you through all the strategies that you should be using right now to protect yourself during a market crash. I'll see you there.